Welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm Simon. We're both property people running our own businesses. And this podcast is just us chatting, as we often do, at least every Wednesday, about anything and everything property. And on the last episode, we talked about the year that was, our 2020, and whether we had succeeded or failed in those things that we'd set out to do. Mine was mostly fail, but so we won't we won't talk on that. Well, if if you if you add up the number of items I planned to do, it was four, and I only achieved one. So, so <laughs> I think I'm with you there. <laughs> so we both failed, but we both we, we you know we we both progressed, and that's that's the important point is that we set yeah. these to progress. And Simon, you mentioned that on the one of the four that you achieved was the selling of the property that you had, and that was to take funds out and progressing to the purchasing of other properties and I guess that will take us neatly into what your plans for for this year 2021. Indeed so first of all welcome to 2021 for for everyone listening I hope you've had a a fantastic transition to the new year and external restrictions and lockdowns and and goodness knows what else haven't put too much of a dampener on it so yeah I've I've now got capital available from having sold a property and I need to do something with it. So I've been off looking at potential properties to to buy. My area is already sort of fairly well defined. I I intend to invest locally to where I am. And that's also where I have some existing investments. Therefore, as you know, perhaps I should take a, a step back slightly. I, as well as the location, I also have a property type that I have a preference for and this is a freehold house those it could be a bungalow but but generally it's a house with two or three bedrooms that could either appeal to a a couple or a a family that, that's sort of my approximate target investment uh, there, there might be some flexibility around that and indeed in the past i have considered a um, a, a larger house that was already an HMO, uh, and I've, I've wondered about taking that route. But uh, but yes, generally speaking, and on this occasion, what I'm looking for is a, a family home, basically a freehold family home. And with that in mind, I've been doing a bit of a bit of hunting, and there's there's quite a few options out there. But a couple that have particularly caught my eye at the moment are two that are just on the general market. I found them on Right Move. But they have tenants in them already, and they are being sold with the tenants. So I quite like this approach because it's very, uh, very passive, <laughs> very, very low effort. So a lot of property investment strategies involve buying a property a bit cheap, that's a bit run down, that, that needs work, that you can invest extra effort and capital and refurbishment and things into to improve the value um, and therefore uh, sort of realize a little more for your initial initial bit of money and while that's fantastic and I will certainly be considering options like that I also really quite like the idea of just just buying something that's that's ready made and and we'll just hit the ground running normally when you you buy a, a property if you're going to refurbish it it's going to be empty for a while you've got council tax and bills and things to pay for a while while you're refurbing it and then you've got to to put it out to the market to find a tenant and all of that takes time and that's extra lost revenue whereas if you've already got a tenant in place it's all just going from day one and the last investment property that I did buy was actually one that already had tenants in it and it's it's great when I completed on that purchase I actually received a little bit of rent as part of the completion where the, the tenants had obviously paid their rent in advance, but the the completion date fell within that, that month. So, so yeah, right from the beginning, actually at the point of completion, I received some rent. Brilliant. <laughs> I would buy a property and get rent right from day one. I think that's that, that's a model that I, I quite like from my general attitude of looking for passive investment right now however it does i think come with extra risks or potential complications in so much as i've got to be very careful 
what the situation is of those tenants that are currently there because I'll be taking on tenants that a Section 21 notice or eviction is effectively unavailable. It's certainly, it would certainly take at least six months to to get rid of tenants if they're causing problems. It would also take that long, um, probably more if they're not paying rent. And that is is a much bigger risk than the normal, where previously you could just give two months notice on Section 21 and, and they would need to need to leave. That compounded with, on top of the, the current six months with Section 21, the government have, have still stated that they're planning to abolish Section 21 completely. So in actual fact, that might come in at some point in 2021 as well. So when taking on existing tenants, I think I am going to have to be very careful to, to make sure I do my homework, not only on the property, but on those tenants as well, and to talk to them and find out their their financial situation and whether they're up to date with their rent and what their their sort of jobs and, and work outlook are like and things. So it's, it's going to complicate that a bit, I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you said that because that was something I was just thinking about for people listening, because I think you've you've raised all of the risks and i think whenever we invest whether that's property or anything and in business we have to be really aware of those but you're already thinking about how to mitigate that and how that happens and as you've already identified it's just going to make the, the process a little bit more cumbersome because you have to do that extra due diligence just to say well okay what sector are they in have they always been consistent with rental payments etc cetera, etc cetera. just as a reminder for both me and listeners section 21 is where we could just take back the property without uh with notification but without reason so we could just simply say we would like the property back yes exactly it's um requesting to end the tenancy with without a reason effectively as opposed to section 8 notices which is where you request to end a tenancy with a reason most commonly because they're they're in rent arrears, but there there are a number of other reasons as well that, that can fit with Section Eight. Yeah, and the other point for you, just thinking about those that are thinking about what they're going to do in property this year. So we've talked about what you're going for in terms of property type, ideal tenants, which is probably a lot more than than some people have already thought about. But I want to step even further, one further above that, which is what is your objective because i know i've got my views on because i from the sounds of it you're and from what i know obviously you're quite long term but for everyone else's benefit when you're thinking about buying what is it that you're thinking about what what is it that you want from that purchase you you mentioned that my overall aim is long term and it it is definitely however i am also very much thinking about the return on investment and the the actual rental income. So quite often, I think when people say looking long term, they mean they're looking to make their money from capital growth. Yeah. And while that's sort of my portfolio growth strategy is to utilize capital growth, it's not really my sort of day to day requirement. For the day to day, I do I do have a, a desire to produce income from the investment. And it's that return on investment that is, is my sort of primary objective, I suppose. I'm not quite sure primary is the right word, but it's, um, I, I suppose all of these things meld together, don't they, in, into, a, into the mix of what I'm looking for. So I am looking for return on investment. However, because I'm happy with looking at a fairly long term, investment i'm not going out saying i must find 15 percent roi or even 10 percent roi because i also have requirements to invest locally to where i am so that i know the area well and i can self-manage the the property which does actually also help me improve the roi assuming you, you don't take out the cost of your own time too much so overall I will be looking for a reasonable return on investment in my local area, which 
I know is, is relatively good and I know has the potential for good capital growth, which could, could help in the long term. But I can also self-manage in the short term, avoid agent fees and, and that kind of thing to, to then in turn feedback and, and help the ROI. Okay. So what, so while we've got you in the hot seat then, and <laughs> this wasn't the plan for this episode, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but go on. <laughs> if, I, if I can keep you talking, it means I don't have to on the subject <laughs> of 2021. So, what, so while we've got you in the hot seat and just thinking about people listening, when you're talking about ROI, not necessarily specific numbers, but what is what it is what is it you're thinking about when you're talking about ROI because we'll have heard terms like so yield because we can be talking about ROI return on capital employed yield so I think just for everyone's benefit be good to know what's in your mind because it'll help others ROI or return on investment is a very commonly used term but it does actually get defined slightly differently by different people so it's, it's a very good point to to ask for a definition So my definition is I take all of the money that I've put into the deal, so the deposit, the stamp duty, the solicitor fees, if there's a refurb needed or anything like that, it would include uh, the cost of the, the refurb. So it's basically all of the upfront capital investment costs. So they're they're my my investment, that's the, the I part of the, the ROI. And then to calculate my return on that, I look at my rental income minus all of the, the ongoing monthly expenses. So that's mortgage payment, any uh, letting fees, agent fees, service charges, if, if such things apply, and also an allowance for maintenance and void periods. So all, all the, the, the maintenance of void periods is obviously an estimate there, a bit of a guess, but you can you can put in a, a, a reasonable figure for those. So basically net net income. Yeah, net income. Income minus all of the costs. Um, and that's the return. And then obviously return on investment is one divided by the other to, to give a, a percentage. Okay, so... And I'm just filling this out. So if you'd invested a hundred grand, so you spent everything you spent you spent on refurbing, purchasing property in terms of your cash, not the value of the property, but in terms of the funds you had invested, if you'd invested a hundred thousand and your net income, that is your income from the rent minus everything that you have to pay for on a monthly basis, including mortgage, was ten thousand, your ROI would be ten percent. Yes, exactly. Yep. So, yeah, so while, while obviously the, the expenses and the rental income is generally on a monthly basis, the RRI is calculated on an annual basis. So, yeah. So, do you have a target in mind of that percentage? Is that, is that what you look at? Yes, I yes I do, but it's a range. So, if it's less than five percent RRI, I'm unlikely to consider it, but. I would then hope to achieve near a six or seven percent ROI, but but it's not required. So anywhere in that range, sort of, well, I mean, obviously it could go higher than seven, but but in the range of five to seven is kind of where I'm expecting to land. And if if it's a, a really good property, or I think the property has really good scope for the future, then I'll be willing to accept a lo- lower ROI in that range. If if I'm sort of less keen on the area or, or something else is worrying me slightly, then I will, will be wanting to look at the, the higher end of that range. It's not an exact figure or an exact sort of science. And it, it, indeed, obviously, it, with the maintenance and things element of it, it it's an estimate anyway. So it, it, it can change. Yeah, I, I think it's a good one to bring out purely because people listening to this, just like us talking about it, will have different criteria. So my first criteria is based on yield be purely because i'm looking at the, the 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 price of the property or the potential sale price and that gives me my first gate if you, if you like so for example if it doesn't hit a, a gate of 10 percent plus then i just don't even look at it once if it, if it meets my first hurdle 
of being above 10 percent and this is this is gross but this is probably another podcast is it if it meets that criteria then i'll i'll go on and do more analysis around things like yeah probably return on capital employed and then ongoing return on investment that sort of thing yeah i think i mean as we've we've mentioned before we we've got a that the startings of a, of a plan for a, a mini series this year looking at the processes of getting started in, in in property investment and i think that that discussion around the calculations and the the financials will be at least an episode within within that series so, so yeah we will we will dive into that a lot more later on yeah and the only reason i call it out because there is no right or wrong and it's it's up to everyone to measure it how they want to but it's it's i think it's good because just from your goal of buy purchasing two properties actually if you had an overall roi it, could it be one could it be could it be three it is it based on number of properties or the the, the revenue you want to generate uh, so yeah, that's interesting. So if if I had one really strong RRI property, would I then consider a, a lower RRI property for the for the second one? And I think probably not. I think it's I think ev- each and every property must justify itself all on its own. Mm. So so yeah, I think I'm I'm looking at each one individually. And while I'm planning to to buy two to three in that range in 2021. I'm not really planning to do them all at once. <laughs> um, I mean, if if suitable properties present themselves, then that might happen. But given that there's a reasonable amount of effort involved in buying a property and then if it doesn't have tenants, getting it ready for tenants and getting it let out. And I'm actually also aware that one of my existing properties, that the tenants there are planning to move out at some point this year as well, so that, that will then also need reletting. So I, I would quite like not to have all these things happening at the same time. So I, I will try to do them in serial, <laughs> but uh, but we'll see how, how life pans out. So I think I've been talking about my plans for, for long enough now, Stuart. So it's, t- it's your turn to, to sit in the hot seat. <laughs> what's, your, <laughs> what's your overall sort of plans for, for 2021? My plans, I'm, I'm desperately, as you know, trying to find a single word to convey the plans because the first word that springs to mind is consolidate, but it's just not exciting, is it? No one wants to consolidate, but that, <laughs> that is the plan. So we've, we've done a lot of building in the last year, in 2020. As listeners will know, we also signed up a, our first rent to rent, which, which is going live as we speak. And we have a second one which is just in the making so we had a target of adding sort of 15 rooms into the portfolio i think in the in the in the next year we we kind of hit that in within 2 months so the big thing for my business lord panda property is really ensuring that all of the rooms are filled and that we had now have systems in place and and that is as unsexy as it can get i mean for me personally it just doesn't it doesn't inspire me but i've now reached a point having run the business for a, almost four and a half years to know that th- this is now the most important thing that that my business needs it doesn't need any more growth it doesn't need any more properties adding to it it just needs to to be able to run effectively so this year is really going to be quite dour from my perspective because I will be annotating all of the processes that we currently undertake so that anybody could do them for me so we do have a small team a small virtual team so this year will be about systemizing creating processes and there will be a couple of little things I have a company with another JV partner and we have completed on a property purchase well we completed on that in November but it was kind of on hold whilst I finished the uh, the other refurb project. And so we've got a four-bed masonette, which is in progress, which will be turning into a four-bed, four-en-suite property. So there is a little bit there to keep me going in terms of excitement. 
But other than that, it will really be all about getting bums on beds, filling those rooms, making sure all of the properties are in good condition, which is which is probably the, the least sexy part of, of what we do. But it's it's also the most important part from from my perspective. Yeah, uh, you you say consolidate and and that you're thinking this will be a, a boring year if like if you like. But then you also mention you're just teeing up not one but two rent to rents and and a masonette refurb, and you've got to <laughs> bring your your recent design led refurb to market. So you're going to be going out and finding your first tenants for that. So you, you're you're not going to be bored. This is not going to be a no. a year without excitement. I'm sure. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I think uh, th- there will certainly be zero chance of me being bored this year. Absolutely no chance of that. I think uh, I think in my head, quite wrong, quite incorrectly, if I'm not purchasing or if I'm not taking on new properties, if I'm not developing new properties, then I feel like I'm treading water, and that's that's just not the case. And as you as you know hearing it back from you just reminds me yeah we, you know we're still we're still moving forwards we're not uh, we're not static by any stretch of the imagination no indeed i think you're going to be very busy still very very busy <laughs> yeah i don't think you're wanting to go into too much more depth about your your plans for this year at this time but i, I think i will manage to uh, to eke out some more details from you as as we go through the year and probably as we get going in our uh, sort of mini series of of getting started in property investment, but for this occasion, I think we should probably be finishing up, Stuart. What do you think? Yeah, I feel like we've um, we, we've we're running over time. I, I would like to add, just in terms of updates. So, in, in terms of this year, for those keen listeners, I did mention a property we were going to buy a commercial property where we were going to turn it to three three sets of HMOs. We we unfortunately can't progress with that one. It's something we've had to 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 back out of, and and that would have been a very very extensive project for us to to develop in twenty twenty one. In fact, to, it would have the year would have been all about that project. So that's something that's not going to happen. But on reflection, it's it's probably a positive. And so I think I think uh, consolidation of focus will be my two key words of this year. But uh, yeah, you're right. We've we've probably taken up too much of people's time, but I think it's it's important to to share what are, what's on our minds for this year because we're, we're, that's what we're all thinking about. And as we talk about that, I guess I'll use this opportunity just to remind people: if you are enjoying the show, if you are getting some value from it, and we we desperately hope that you are, and we sure you are, if you're still listening here, then please share it with somebody else, leave a rating or review, or if you're feeling really kind this year, do all three. And We'll uh, continue to provide our updates and I look forward to sharing photos of our of the design-led property that uh, we've talked about on the show notes and we'll do that very soon. And that can all be found on thebusinessofproperty.com. Other than that, we'll see you on next week's episode.